video I decided to come out here to the forest because I think it's appropriate for what I'm about to talk about and <clears throat> really what I want to talk about is for those people who want to get back into a more indigenous spirituality a European indigenous spirituality and this is not just for Europeans but really for all peoples across the world who want to get back into their own indigenous spirituality what's aligned with their um, biology but also aligned with their environment their natural indigenous environment as well but strictly in this one I'm going to be talking about it from a European perspective as I am a European man and living in Europe so here in the forest is really what I would call the place where you find solitude and serenity in a sense. Now, European man for the, well, about for the last, I would say 1,500 years to 1,000 years, has been taught that they find that in the church. And I can tell you, as a, um, like a young child going to church, I never actually liked it. I always found it very, like, why do I have to go here? And there was always a presence of me just really like not liking the atmosphere in there either. There was something very unnatural about it. Something very... It's, it's very much like a... Um, being led into a... Uh, being led into a sheep's pen. And there seems to be something very um, domesticating about it as well, spiritually. Because I think the, the forest is where we find serenity. It's where we find spirit. Our, and it's where our spiritual journey is really encapsulated very well. And it's where we can find the most spiritual experiences from actually being in the natural environment. And the reason why the cathedrals were crafted to look like the the forest was to, was to lure us in there because we've been finding spiritual ecstasy and awe in the forests for thousands and thousands and thousands of years and the reason and it was basically a way of basically tricking us to get into this you know enclosed space to basically fucking brainwash us with this um, death cult dogma what came out of the Christian religion when it was forced upon us Europeans and then forced upon the rest of the world and we really need and this is where we find our because this place is full of life it's full of life and full of like energy everything is living here and you come to contact with like various spirits what are visible in the physical eye in the five senses but also invisible in the in the uh, other dimensional planes I mean what I see sometimes in the um, pagan community or the neo-pagan community or, or whatever you want to call it uh, I see a lot of like people saying well we need to kind of build a, a temple we need to kind of have a you know a book which tells us like and no because that's really what not what Europeans had before that. I mean, I can't really, sorry, I can't really see any evidence of there in Northern Europe, ex with the exception of the Mediterranean region, but I'm talking more about the Northern part of Europe, where they actually had temples. They had groves, they had stone circles, they had, uh, and things like that. But they never had temples, they never had enclosed temples. And people will point to the um, stave churches in Scandinavia and say that's an example. But the, to be honest, I think those stave, te stave temples were built by Christians anyway. 
and they then they went to the Great Halls, um, but they were a place where the Great Hall was a place where you wouldn't have gone to find spiritual serenity or guidance. That was a place where you went. Well, that's the place where basically the uh, chieftain was, and you would have great feasts there and stuff like that. So it wasn't really the same thing uh, as going to a temple to worship something. I don't even like, you know, worship really any deity because I, I venerate them. I have an altar for them in, in my home. And that's probably the, the, the way you should do it. Have an altar for, your, uh, for the deities you venerate, which is very different from worship. Veneration is when you basically see them as part of part of you and who you are and archetypes of what exists in your own consciousness and then giving them a a respectful respect a respectable uh what's the word I'm looking for a respectable honoring basically basically you you it's a way of basically of respect you have a like you saw water in your home and that's the best way really to do it I mean yes they did have um idol in um not here in northern europe but it was more like they were you know more the wooden uh, idols but they would have them in more groves and around standing stones they wouldn't have had them in they wouldn't have had any in enclosed like you know building where they would have you know done their veneration practices or their work or their worship practices so really the forest what i find and you know the groves were in the forest and a lot of the, even the standing stones not all of them but a lot of them were actually in forests as well forests as well or embedded in forests so the forest was really for for the european for the european soul i would say is really the place you should go to to find your own spiritual walkway if you will and you know, I come into the, I go into the forest as much as I can, uh, nearly every single day, just to find that place, that place of quietness, that place of peace, that place of just, of where I can basically just meditate and rest my mind, and be around and think things over and reflect, and it's and it's so like just any you should anyone who hasn't tried it yet should just go and fucking try it and. You know, if it doesn't work, and I will, I, I guarantee you it will work for you. It will. So, yeah, I mean, the, I mean, being around, like, nature and stuff like that, it's the, it's the, really the, the place, place where you do connect with, you know, divinity. And it's really the place that you do connect with the, what I call the higher force. And, you know, nature does have its dark sides as well. It can be quite cruel to those who are stupid and weak and basically pathetic but it can be very rewarding for those who maybe not be the strongest person or the most intelligent person but who strive to be more intelligent to be stronger and that that's what we're put on this fucking plane of Midgard to do we're put on this plane to evolve we're put on this plane to become stronger to become more intelligent to become more wise to become basically better because people aren't fine just the fucking way they are they need to fucking evolve from that we're constantly in a state of evolution and nature always reveals what is true what is truth it doesn't reveal it, 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 it is the arbiter of what reveals is, is true because it shows you what objective reality is and i'm not saying that basically the subjective does not matter but you've got to have to come to terms of what is also objective objective reality exists and whether people like it or not it doesn't really fucking care it it's just there and it is what it is and it's something what the you know the creative divine force or what you want to call the highest the higher force or the source or whatever you want to call it it's it's what it, that's what they've put into place and that's the way it is and you know the the animist um, 
philosophy that I go by because my philosophically I am an animist and an animist means that you see all everything that exists within nature as a living entity so the and the so basically the animals the the plants the the elements all of it everything that exists that was born of from nature is has a soul or a living or basically a spiritual dimension to it and we lost this when we in Europe when we converted to Christianity because it told you that only humans had souls and basically nothing else in nature has a soul and it's basically all evil and it's basically all of the all infected by the devil and all this kind of like shit really and yes but that we we all are infected by darkness don't get me wrong everything in nature is everything existing is it's infected by things that are is affected by things that are dark but by the darkness by by an infection what has been here for a very 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 long time and this infection is the dark aspect of nature and by evolving we can sometime in the future heal from this but it's not just up to but it's us to up, up, up to us to take that before us within ourselves and to realize that nature is there and that it does have these aspects what are very negative within it and that they need to be recognized and realized rather than because Christianity told us to just fucking ignore all that and escape from all that and not look at fucking that not look into the fucking shadow not look into the fucking darkness and look where the fucking most of you know the, the human race is today they huddle in fucking you know urban city areas to basically be around all the bright lights so they never have to go into the fucking darkness on their fucking own in a place where there is no fucking light and look at it fucking right in the fucking face that is what we have to go through uh, it doesn't matter if you like it or not it's fucking there and it's not fucking going away until we fucking deal with it So, <clears throat> where I where I am at the moment, I'm in uh, in England, and here at the moment it's going into the autumn season. So when we go into the autumn season, and it's past sound pine now, so we're going to the autumn season. We're going through the underworld, the darkness, and this is a perfect time to kind of have the opportunity, if you haven't already, to realise that there is a darker aspect of you know, this, this existence and that you're going to have to face it if you like it or not and face that it does exist and it is there and that, you know, life isn't all fucking, you know, love all at night and uh, fucking going around just being nice to each other all the fucking time. I mean, come on. You know, I'm quite a. Obviously, I'm being ra I've been raised to be quite a quote unquote polite person. It's part of the whole English mannerisms thing over here. But that that's what I've been raised into, and so I understand what being nice all the time is kind of like. And it's not really something that really gets you very far because when you're too nice to people, also. It creates this kind of, it creates for some very toxic people, some sociopathic, psychopathic, narcissistic types that just taking complete advantage of you. And I went through this throughout my life, you know, I've had experiences like this when I've just been too fucking nice in the past. And I had like these types of people take complete advantage of me. And you know, and it's fucking bullshit that you get from it. I did learn from it in the end, it fucking made me more a lot more streetwise. But if you're gonna carry on being like that, I'll, 
after ex those type of experiences, those experiences fucking teach you something. And I felt those experiences, that's what the experience is all about, they're teaching you fucking things along the fucking path you walk. So that basically you can evolve from that and then basically you can become stronger and more wiser and more intelligent. And this is the whole point of it. This is the fucking... This is what fucking real spirituality is all fucking about. Real spirituality is not fucking sitting on a fucking pillow, meditating, going on all the fucking time, and just staying in a place of complete, you know, peace, where, you know, and light, where nothing can basically, when you see nothing that is horrible or nasty. You've got to fucking face that thing that is fucking horrible or nasty. You've got to fucking fight through it. You've got to see it as the fucking, you know, the the fucking beast for what it is. You've got to see it for what it for like how four fucking fights giants or how fucking you know Sigurd fucking fights the dragon. You've got to fucking go in there. You've got to fucking embrace it, and you've got to fucking be able to fucking defend yourself against it. And you build up that fucking armor, and you build that fucking armor around your fucking psyche, and you fucking come in into the contact with all that there is. And maybe the reason why I'm, you know, speaking so fucking, you know, passionately about this right now, because this is the fucking nature fueling me throughout, from being right out here. Now behind me you can see the, um, some birch trees, I don't know if you can see them, but we're around a lot of birch trees. And the birch tree is the first tree in the Omam script, which is the what I've talked about previously on my channel, it's basically the kind of Irish Celtic version of the runes. And it was their externalised, well, it's a language they externalised just like the, the Norse, Scandinavians, Germanics, whatever you want to call them, um, externalised runes. And so the birch is the first of the Omam, and Birch means beginnings, it means basically purifying yourself, it means starting all over and basically just getting the fucking toxicity that has been keeping you back and facing it and just like purging it from your space and cleansing yourself, purifying yourself, purifying that energy that has been infecting you and basically pulling you down the whole time and basically just purifying all of that and then starting over, starting afresh. And I've been doing a, a you know, a ritual with um, the birch tree for for quite a while now, for a, like I said, about around a month. And it has really fucking made changes in my life. And I've done that in accordance with going through uh, just before the the new year which is starts at Samhain because the the new year we're given now these days the one that starts in January the, well, the, starts, the one what basically starts in 31st of December 1st of January is actually a Christian um, I think I think it's Christian Roman version of the what the new year is and the true new year I think here in in Northern Europe started in starts in Samhain or end, and ends in Samhain the previous year so really this is where around this time this is where the new true new year starts and with that you you're going to have to basically make sacrifices and you know I've made sacrifices by doing that and yeah it's not fucking easy but then who said it who said it was easy who said fucking life was easy and you know it may it may come across that i'm just being all fucking cynical here but you know maybe that's something about you know us brits we are quite cynical if you want to know that's part of our um it has part of, part of a um one of the so-called negative stereotypes about you know the the, the brits the, the british people the english people and in, in general but but it's just you know, it, but yeah, they, yeah, but like, cynicism does come from something. It's not me, me being nihilistic or anything, or saying that that there isn't that life is meaningless because it isn't. It does have fucking meaning. 
And to be honest, this fucking nihilist philosophy can just fuck off. It can fuck off. This whole, there's no meaning to life and we're just a fucking accident. No, you're not a fucking accident. You fucking mean something. You're not fucking worthless.